Security and protection over your software is a key aspect of the development process. We're told to hide our API keys, test our code for possible security issues, and add rate limits to our API calls. And even though we're told to do this and are usually warned a thousand times by our overlords at AWS and Vercel, I bet that 99% of us just don't bother doing this. At least for me, I do try to keep my apps as secure as possible. For example, hiding my API keys. There is a one-off chance that I will forget to put my env file in my git ignore and then it's just public. And outside of basic testing for you know some security issue or rate limiting in very specific parts of my apps, that is the extent that I will go to to securing my app. And unfortunately for me, this lack of protection on my software came back to bite me. You see, I was enjoying a nice Friday evening in the hot state of Texas, which I was visiting, and I got a weird email from Resend. And the email is literally titled as account suspension. And so out of curiosity, I open up the email, and in the email, they said that they have suspended my account due to too much spam and bounce rate emails. And so at this moment, my heart is pounding because I don't know what to expect. So I open resend and I noticed that someone accessed all the API keys in all my apps that include resend and email verification and spammed it hundreds of thousands of times. And so at this point, I know that this is an orchestrated attack on all my apps just based off the bounce rate and no way there's gonna be this many users on my apps. And all I'm thinking about at this point is about my overlord Next.js hosting service, Vercel. And I say this because hosting services like Vercel and AWS are quite literally known for being absolutely ruthless when it comes to spam and so I quickly logged into Vercel and accessed my storage to check on how big that bill was gonna be and luckily the quote-unquote hacker stopped at a couple hundred thousand calls and what I noticed was it wasn't even just the emails that was being attacked it was a bunch of other features and so that's what made it reach into the hundreds of thousands and luckily for me I put a capacity on how much I can spend um, if we go over and so my bill literally came to zero and so you'll not be seeing me on the streets anytime soon and so we'll get into how i'm fixing this because it's a big lesson learned but there are two main mistakes that i made that um, i think you can learn from my first big mistake was not rate limiting all my api calls throughout all my apps again what was attacked was mostly the emails but there were some features that were also spammed this was mostly in the nizzy starter kit as well as level up and honestly i think i put too much trust in my own community when I know most of you are awesome people. I literally talk to you every day, but there was one individual, I guess, that just wasn't happy. And so what I should have done was just go the extra mile and protect something like an email where we're using an email provider. I just, I should have done that. And in hindsight, it was a dumb decision. And the second mistake that I did was that I was just lazy. Again, I'll show you how I implemented a rate limit on the email calls, but I know how to do this and it just came down to laziness and me not wanting to do it in the first place. And if I do want to scale my startup, be a better developer, be a better entrepreneur, then I cannot be this lazy um, when it comes to protecting my app. Fortunately, we're at the early stages of the startup where it's fine that this happened because users weren't affected and the bill wasn't too high because of the bandwidth cap. But if I didn't put the bandwidth cap on and I had more users, maybe some smarter hacker because this hacker was a little dumb he didn't even spam it a million times um it, it just could have been much worse and so how i'm protecting my app from any ddos from now on and any type of spam is through rate limiting and so the word rate limit is kind of self-explanatory but what it does for you is it caps how many times your api can be called by a specific user so i'm personally using upstash thanks to josh tried coding he actually put me on it but um, there's a bunch of services for rate limiting. You can actually even implement your own rate limiting. And so how I'm implementing this is firstly creating a variable called Redis. And in there, I'm calling the URL and token API keys. And underneath that, I'm creating a variable called rate limit. And we're setting the amount of calls to two every 30 minutes. So basically the user can call the API only two times every 30 minutes. And from this moment, we're just creating a regular API call. In our case, we're creating a post request where we're grabbing the user's email and posting it to resend to store that user email. Well, the only difference being that in the try catch block, we are identifying the user's IP address to know 
how many times the user has used up the API. We are then connecting the user's IP address to the amount of requests they have done with this specific API. And if they've gone over that, which in our case is two every 30 minutes, we just give them an error saying that they cannot do this. And this is not even an advertisement for Upstash, but it was just super easy to put it in, pause. And this is what I mean by it's just pure laziness on my end. It took maybe 20 lines of code and a lot of it was just from their documentation and I could have just easily put this in just to protect my app. So please learn from my mistakes and protect your app. And so if you made it to the end of this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. It will really go a long way and I don't know, maybe in a few days I might get that Vercel bill so it will help. Also, if you made it to the end of this video, I want you to leave two heart eyes emojis. That way I know that you made it to the end of this video and I promise that I will respond to you back. Um, and yeah, happy coding. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.